I meditate um, twice, 20 minutes twice daily because I was introduced to Vedic meditation many, many, many years ago, over 15 years ago now. And it was actually a gift. It was a gift from my boyfriend at the time because he wanted me to calm down. Little did he know that Vedic meditation and any kind of meditation actually just empowers you to authentically show up in your wholeness. I had many, many years to go after being introduced to uh, Vedic meditation before I could really embrace my wholeness because I hadn't yet solved the period problem, but boy, 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 was it a wonderful experience when uh, I had shifted to pain-free, PMS-free, and regular cycles and could meditate because one of the things about meditation is that if you are still suffering with menstrual problems then they because your authentic your authenticity is amplified and your awareness is amplified as a result of meditation it actually can result in the pain being amplified because your awareness is amplified your awareness of that which does not serve you is amplified so Anyways, why that matters is because I was meditating and as I was meditating that moment when, you know, in in The Bodyguard when Whitney Houston is sitting on that stool and the snow is falling, like the fake snow, and she's like sitting there and she's like looking out into the distance, like, and she's like sitting like this and the, and the song goes, Doom, and, uh, and she sits there. And she doesn't stand like this and go like, and I, 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 I will always love you. She doesn't do that. She's sitting almost like this and she goes, boom. Oh yeah, by the way, this is really getting on my nerves. I should just move it. That is not because I'm slovenly. That's because Whitman moves things around and he reorganized his home um, today, so that's like he's put that as like that's now his little welcome mat when he okay so the music goes and then she says you know and she doesn't perform it she bees right she sits there and she goes and uh, and I know that this this moment has been swirling around in my head because Rebecca Hansen um who I think is in, she's not in the collective, so she, I think she might be in, in um, Together We Thrive. Um, she did a thing about this song, and so it's been in my head. For Boarding weeks. from Canada, hello. And hello, hello, hello. That moment um, has always struck okay. me because so, uh, she and did people not are coming in live, her so definitely, majesty. Um, she was it. And because she was it, easeful impact, she could. <laughs> show the power of that moment through her without showing. She sat there, two feet spread, like this, essentially, but, you know, obviously zoomed out and took that, the strongest, most valuable part of the song. And I, yeah, 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 I will always love you. Chime in with any comments you have. We're talking about this song, I Will Always Love You, and why it is the song that your period and womb would sing to you if it could. And I was talking about how I got there, how I was meditating and then Whitney Houston, like that moment came into my head and how it was about her amplified being that allowed her to easefully sing that note with such power. And this song, I learned the story of this song from Comedy Central's Drunk History, where comedians get drunk while they're learning about a moment in history. And the moment in history was the moment that Dolly Parton wrote this song. And Dolly Parton wrote this song for her former talent manager. Dolly Parton was a songwriter for the TV show Grand Ole Opry Presents, when she was in Nashville, Tennessee, which I'm sure she probably still lives in now. And, and you know, Dolly Parton was a songwriter and she was a singer, but she was a songwriter and so she was contributing songs. And, you know, this talent manager one day, he gave her a shot. He let her perform on Grand Ole Opry and she did a great job, so she got to keep performing. But he gave her her first big break and then he started to give her more breaks and more breaks and more breaks. And then she became his darling and, 
Um, he got her as far as she could and then, you know, she soared and she took flight and she stopped working with him and she kept writing her own music and she kept growing and growing and growing in importance. And she, um, and years later, you know, the talent manager, he doesn't do so well and, uh, he sues her. He sues her over and over again because he says, you never got out of the contract with me. So you have to give me 30% of all of your earnings that you've ever earned in your lifetime. And, you know, Dolly Parton's doing her thing. She's pushing back, but he's, he's in the hospital and he's very, very sick and he may be on his deathbed and she doesn't know, but she goes to visit him and he's like, you owe me money. And she says, you know what? Sure. She says, take it take it and she signs over this money to him and she's looking at him and she's her heart's breaking and it inspires her to write this song and so she writes this song i will always love you i hope life treats you kind i i hope that you have all you dream of and i wish you joy and happiness but above all this i wish you love and she says this to a man who is suing her for 30% of all that she created, even though he was not a part of most of that creation. And she just comes at him with such empathy. And here's that, here's the, here's the bridge of that. Your womb if you are in pain, if you are experiencing irregular symptoms, I mean, excuse me, irregular cycles, or you have wild endometrial growths all over your body, or you have fibroids, or you have PMDD, or you have terrifying PMS, or you have debilitating cramps, or you have menstrual migraines, or, you know, vomiting when you are menstruating, you know, if you have all those things, and a lot of the things I just listed, I experienced as well. It is because your womb is chaotically trying to communicate with you that it needs help. And it doesn't want to be put in a brace, which is what happens when we use birth control. And it doesn't want to be medicated to do okay, to be right with these relief interventions that we offer like special diets or special exercises. It wants to be treated as it needs to be treated so that it can allow you to easily impact so that all you need to do is show up in the Whitney Houston, I'm gonna belt right now, sitting like this. I'm gonna belt so that all of myself, so that my belly can expand so vastly, much more vastly than it could expand if I stood like this. I'm going to give my diaphragm the room it needs to really let me sing. That's easeful impact. That's what your womb wants for you. And it won't give up on you, which is why the effects of period pain and, 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 the, and all of the wildness and all the chaos, it keeps getting crazier and crazier, not because your womb means to hurt you, but because it's going to keep raising its hand and telling you things are not okay. And it knows, and I know, and I've witnessed, and I've seen it happen with client after client after client, and I've seen it happen for myself. What happens when you get to the place where your womb no longer has to scream. It's like a child that was once told it was bad and it was awful, or like a rescue animal that was neglected and hurt and abused. You see, we're trying, we, we think we're doing the right thing when we're actually abusing our womb. We think we're doing the right thing when we're trying to keep up with the Joneses and we're trying to keep up with people who were not born with a uterus and we're trying to do what's medically right. We thought we were doing the right thing, but it turns out that what the womb needs is something entirely different. 
And when we take the time to nurture it and to listen to it and to give it what it needs and to encourage its innate strengths, it's like, it's like the pit bull who has that turnaround and starts to trust its owners. It's like the child who realizes that it is safe to speak up. You're not going to get hit. You know, there's this, this change that happens and then the child grabs your hand and says, let me show you something. Let me show you something really cool. Let me tell you my secrets because I can trust you. That is what happens when we shift to pain-free, PMS-free periods and regular cycles. But the shift happens because we are nourishing it in a way that encourages it to shine. And knowing how to do that is not news. We actually end up re-remembering how to get there. And so our womb sings those words, I will always love you because it's not going to give up on you. And some of us do end up taking the route of hysterectomy because doctors tell you, tell us there's no other way. There is. But if it comes to that, and for those of you who have done that, know that your womb, even when it was being taken out, was singing that song, I will always love you. Those of us who are suffering, it is because our wombs will not give up on us. I will not give up on you. It will not give up on you. It can be healed. It can degenerate and it can regenerate. And that's what we do. So I wish you joy. I wish you ease. I wish you space and I wish you grace, not because those are things that are there for you, they're right here right now and there's so many ways to find the starting off point and that's what we do here so i'll end there thank you Mwah.